In this video, I'll be going over how you can paint your sculpts using vertex paint, and I'll be talking about the different shades and pigments on the face. And by the end of this video, you'll have a fantastic looking face sculpt. Okay, so here's where we got up to last time. You don't have to have this exact model, but you can download it from the link in the description if you want to follow along precisely with me, or you can use any face model that you've got. Now, in order to start painting our model, we need to come up to the interaction modes here and choose vertex paint. You can see the draw brush is enabled here. We've got our main color just here. We've also got the radius and the strength. And again, if you go to the active tool and workspace settings, you can see those options on the side here. So I'll change my color to just a red color for now and show you what happens if I paint. I'll make my brush nice and small with F and start painting on my object. Now that's great and it all looks fine. What that has done has created a color attribute. You can find that attribute down here under the object data properties. And there it is, the color attributes. If I open that up, it's created one called attribute. Now the problem is that isn't hooked up to my material yet. So although we can see it in solid mode here, if I go to material preview mode, you can see that we just have this white material. We fix this by hooking up the attribute to our color slot. And we do that in the shading workspace. So I'll go across to the shading workspace and you can see I've got my object selected here, but it doesn't have any material at the moment. So it's just showing this default white material. I'll give it a new material just here. And I'll zoom out just a touch so you can see what it's added. It's added a principal BSDF attached to the material output. You can also find this in the material properties here, but we'll be using this layout here because it's a bit easier. So I'll zoom in and you can see we've got a color slot up here. And if I change the color here, it gives me the color wheel and I can choose different colors. I'll undo that though, so we go back to white. Not that it makes too much difference because we're going to plug a color into here. So as I was saying, under the object data properties, we've got the color attribute here that's just been made. I'll just extend this out so you can see the name. And the name will be important in a moment. So I need to plug that color attribute into the base color. So I'll go to the add menu and it's under input color attribute. And you can see that there, I'll drag it before my principal BSDF node here and hook up the yellow to the yellow or the base color to the color. And notice when I did that, my red lines appeared. That's because the only attribute option is the attribute here, as you can see. You can of course rename this to something sensible like color. I'm British, so we put a U in it. But remember, you have to change it in here as well. So we're all set up and ready for painting. And for this, I'll go back to the sculpting workspace. It's worth noting that you can do it in here. You could go to the object tab here and go to vertex paint here. I just feel it's a little bit of an easier workspace if we go back to sculpting. However, when you go back to sculpting, you will be put back into sculpt mode. So you need to change back to vertex paint. The quick way of doing this is holding down control and pressing tab and then going up to vertex paint with the pie menu. And I'm back in vertex paint and I can start painting again. I will go back to the active tool and workspace settings at the top here so we can see the brush settings. And I really want to fill the whole face in with a sort of pinky skin color. To fill the whole object with the selected color, you press Shift K and that's all gone nice and red. So let's find that pinky color. I'll just scroll up a bit so we can see the color wheel nice and easily. And what I'm going to do is open up the color palette option because this will be useful in a second and I'll create a new color palette. So let's find a pinky sort of skin color somewhere around about here, a little bit less bright, probably around there. Now you only really find out when you start filling in. So I'll move my mouse over my object and press Shift K and that's not such a bad skin color. So I'll add that to the color palette. Now you might want to try a few different skin colors just to see what looks nice on your model. I think a tiny bit more saturated, so towards the outside of the circle might look quite interesting. So I'll press Shift K there and I slightly prefer that it's a little bit more cartoony. So I'll add that to my color palette as well. And I can always jump between the two Try this one again, so Shift K, a little bit lighter, perhaps a little bit more realistic in some way, and then click on my more saturated one, Shift K, and see what that looks like. If you want to know the exact color I'm using, I'll click on the color here and you can see the values there and the hex code if you want it there. And I'll leave that on the screen and you might want to just pause the video and catch up with me setting up your color attribute and filling it in with that pinky color. Now for the next part of painting the face, you'll notice that this looks very flat and actually the face does have a lot of different pigments to it. This is an exaggeration of the types of colors you're likely to see across the face. I believe the reference comes from Cynix Design who has some art YouTube tutorials. 
but it's a really good example of the colors that you notice in different parts of the face. So I'll be using that as a reference. So I'll start with the yellow at the top. So I'll choose that color, probably somewhere round about here. Now I don't want to paint straight on it like this because I want to keep some of this sort of pinky color. So I'll undo that and I'll put the strength down to 0.1. Now you might, if you have a pen, want to enable the pen pressure settings so you can draw lightly and have less ink come out as it were. I'll resize my brush so it's nice and big and I'll paint across the top. Now I'm being very subtle. You can hardly see it on your screens there. I'll just paint across here a little bit more. But the more I paint, of course, the more yellow it's going to become. So make your brush nice and big and maybe just a couple of strokes across there and I'll undo the last stroke that I've done there. So just a subtle yellowness to the top there. I'll add that color to the color palette so I can easily get back to it. And for now I'm looking at the top image. So just those basic pigments for now. And let's choose the red. I'll choose a bright red, add that to the palette. And we've got some basically across the middle here. So I'll just draw straight across the middle and that's including the ears as well. The ears are fairly red. So we're right across the middle there. I might add just a touch to the nose and maybe a tiny bit to the side of the cheek just there. Now you might be tempted to fill in the lips now, but always paint the big areas first and then work on the details. So I'll go to that blue color, which is slightly across to the greens. I'll add that to the color palette. I might make this one a little bit darker somewhere around there. You don't have to be particularly precise with these because our strength is fairly low from the jaw all the way down to here and across the lips like this. So we've got a very sort of subtle change of colors as we go down the face. Now with cartoon faces, you might want to overemphasize this slightly. So you might want to add just maybe a touch more blues around the place, but it really depends on how stylized you want to go. So now's a good time to catch up with me and paint in the basic pigments of the face based on that top image. Okay, now I'm looking at the second image where there's a bit more detail. And that's why I've got my color palette here to jump between the colors. I'll choose the red and go into the eyelids. And the top eyelid has a lot of red in it. So I can go across that maybe three or four times. And just at the very top of the bottom eyelid, we've got a lot of red there. Underneath the eyes, we have kind of bags. So again, I'll select that blue. I might go a little bit darker for the bags, brush a bit bigger, and I'll go to that crease line that I've got there. It might be a touch over the top at the moment, but I think that's okay. There's a bit more orangey areas around here. So I'll choose the yellow. And because we've got a bit of red underneath, I'll paint in a little bit of that yellow there and it will mix with the red in the background. There's also a tiny bit of orange under the lips as well, just around these areas here. Now I can paint in the lips, so I'll get my red color. Again, still with a strength of 0.1. Make my brush nice and small and just paint across those. That's once and maybe twice, but I'm just dotting my brush around now. So there's a little bit of variation across the lips there. I might emphasize the nostrils a little bit underneath and maybe just a few spots around the nose just to give it a little bit of variation. And the very last thing is if I go back to my skin color, which was this one here, this bit up here has a sort of duller skin color, not so red, and the front of the nose there as well. I might go a little bit less saturated and emphasize that a bit more. And there we go, I've painted the face. So it's a good time to pause the video, catch up with me and paint in those basic pigments of the face. It still looks a bit flat at the moment. That's why we need some lighting. But before we do that, we need to sort out our eyes. I'm going to do this in a really simple way. So I'll go to the shading workspace, select the eyes, zoom in and give it a new material. So it starts off as white. I'll zoom in a bit closer. And if I go to edit mode, you can see the areas are already defined for us. Remember I've rotated my sphere 90 degrees on the X axis. So that top point of the sphere is pointing towards the front. Now, if I go to face mode, so face mode up here, and remember this is an edit mode, I can select these middle faces here and come down to my slots here and give it a new slot. So I'll press the plus sign. I'll assign them to this slot here. Now you won't see any change at the moment because there's no material in this slot. It's got no name there. So I need to add a new material to this slot. I'll call this black and I'll actually change it to black and you can see those faces change. So I'll just show you that again. I've got now two slots, the top material, which is just the white, which everything else has, and the black material, which these new faces are assigned to. So the next thing for me to do is to select the iris. Now I'll zoom in a bit and you can select a face loop. So all these faces going around by alt and left clicking on one of the lines going across the face loop you want. So one of these lines across here. So if I choose this one over here, we'll choose this face loop 
and this one here, this face loop. So as a challenge to you, I want you to give this a new slot, assign these faces to the slot and give it a new color. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so hopefully you've gotten okay with that. I'll come down to my slots, press the plus sign to create a new slot and assign them to that slot. This has no material, so I need to give it a new material and I'll call this blue and change the base color to a blue color. Maybe a little bit darker somewhere around about here maybe. Remember you're looking at this color here, not this color here, because as soon as I deselect those faces, so Alt A to deselect, you'll actually see the blue. And we can just go in and change it a little bit more if we feel we need to. Might make it a little bit darker, I think. So we've got our three slots, black, blue, and white. I'll just click on the white and actually call it white. And I might just make the color a little bit more gray, somewhere around here, I think. Now at the moment, it's not very shiny. So we need to just scroll down a little bit to the roughness and bring that all the way down. But we need to do that for each of our slots. So the black color as well and the blue color as well. And now it's a shiny eye. It's still got this flat shading, unfortunately. So we need to go into object mode with tab, right click and shade smooth. We've got this nice round looking eyes. I'll deselect those so you can see what they look like. And that's great. So it looks all right at this point, but there's a fair bit we need to do with the lighting. So in the next episode, I'll talk about lighting and rendering to get the most out of your characters. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.